Hello everyone. How are you? Hope my family members are doing okay and are in good health. Please be safe and take all the precautionary measures. Today I have picked up contract act as requested by many of you. So, today's topic is privity to contract and by the end of the session you will realize that even the small topic can actually turn the table in the practical world now without wasting much time let's see the case law hello sir nice to meet you nice to meet you too have a seat Sir, on behalf of Ju, I want to say that it will be our honor to have a cooperation with you. Well, as you know, Dunlop has maintained such a good reputation in the market, so we have our own terms and conditions to pass the product to distributors. All right, please tell your conditions. Dunlop has always maintained its quality and produced best quality products in the market, rather than those cheap quality tires present in the market. Thus, we. Don't want dealers, as well as retailers, to sell our product cheaply, but to maintain a standard resale price. So, all the dealers who are associated with us are recommended not to sell our product below standard resale price. Okay, sir, we can agree on this term. Wait, let me finish. Not only you can't sell below the price, but you have to also get the same undertaking from the retailers. If retailers did sell below the list price, they would have to pay five pounds per tire and liquidated damages to Dunlop. Okay, sir. We agree to your terms. Let's make a deal then. Hello, sir. Sorry for the delay. No, it's all right, ma'am. Sir, please tell your contract details. On the request of the manufacturer, there is an additional clause other than the normal clauses we have. Okay. And what is it? The manufacturer has set an resale price below which you are not allowed to sell. Since there are high demand in the market, I don't think there would be a problem in that. Okay. We can work on it. And to ensure that, Dunlop has also put five pounds as liquidated damages to be paid to them if you violate this condition. All right. Let's finalize the contract then. Hello, ma'am. Nice to meet you. Hello. Nice to meet you too. Please have a seat. What's the problem, ma'am? Actually, as you know that market of tires are not going well recently. And due to that, we are facing challenges. So, we wanted to lower our prices in order to compete in the market. But we had an agreement with Dunlop company that we cannot sell tires at a price lower than their resale price. So I called you today to seek some legal advice. What can be best done in this case? But as per my knowledge, Dunlop doesn't contract with retailers. They have their dealers. Yes, you are right. I have contract with the dealer, but he had told me this condition. Great then. The problem is solved. What do you mean? Ma'am, in legal language, it is called as doctrine of privity to contract. Since you contract is made between your company and the dealer, Dunlop company is not a party to contract, neither any consideration is paid. Thus Dunlop has no right to sue you. You can sell the tires below the resale price without the problem of liquidated damages. Oh that's great. Thank you. Dunlop company got to know that Selfridge company has sold the product below their resale price and accordingly sued them for liquidated damages. There was no contract between Dunlop and Selfridge and therefore Dunlop cannot sue. There are a few fundamental principles of law underpinning this decision. First, the doctrine of privity, which states that only a party to a contract can sue in breach of the contract. Second, the doctrine of consideration would require the promisee Dunlop to give consideration to Selfridge for the contract to be completed. 
and this did not occur, as Dunlop did not give anything to Selfridge, here. Selfridge made a promise to Dunlop to only sell at a certain price, but it was gratuitous, because Dunlop gave no consideration in return. Third, the only way that a principal, not named in a contract can be sued, is if he acted as an agent, on behalf of one of the parties, privy to the contract. Dew was not acting as an agent for Dunlop, therefore this does not apply in this case. If Dew were Dunlop's agent, then the effect of the two deals would really be one deal. The tires belonged to Dew, not Dunlop. They had already sold them. So thus Dew is not an agent of Dunlop. Although we thought that Dunlop will be compensated, we saw that how the small concept turn the table around in favor of Selfridge Company. However, there are some exceptions to this doctrine. But I will discuss these exceptions in my next video. Till then, stay connected. Thank you.